here it is Wednesday night on Twitch and that can only mean one thing it is time for us to create a character all inspired based off of miniature so you can see I've got some things set up on the big screen here right behind me and I've got two bags of miniatures I've got my 4d6 I've got a character sheet and I've got my player's handbook now I am trying to keep a everything in this show as basic as possible uh, so unless I really feel the need I'm trying to keep just in the original player's handbook so all of this is based on fifth edition D&D &D, and all of the characters that we're creating are all based off of the miniature that we're selecting um, most of the time I try to keep it as random as possible in case you've never seen the uh, stream. I tend to try to pick something that's unique and different so there are times where a couple of them will get my attention and I'll narrow it down sometimes via roles and yeah just have a lot of fun creating characters all based off a of miniature. The premise of this um, I guess series or show for our Wednesday nights is oftentimes as players we create a concept in our mind and then build out a character and then we can search for a mini to meet that character that we've set up and created. So this is kind of turning that on its head and saying if you're in a game store or online and you see a miniature that's really cool looking, you can use that miniature and build a character based on that miniature. So all inspired based on the miniature. So premise wise, I try to stick to as basic as possible. So I actually roll the stats I think one time we've done a standard array and one time we did a point by. But aside from that, it's all based on just whatever the dice grant me and whatever the miniature inspires me to do. So without further ado, um, let's see. This is the bag that we pulled from last time. There were a lot of, uh, a lot of similar characters in here, but that was the bag I used last time. So this time I'm going to pull out of our original. And the first one coming up, oh, I recognize this one. This is out of the Bones 5 Greek Odyssey expansion. Oh, throw them right down there. So a Bones 5 Greek expansion. And you can see this is a Greek-themed miniature. It's got a wolf on the shield. It looks like a breastplate with some greaves and van braces, a big old cape. It's got a lion's uh, fur on the cloak. It does have a short sword that's very similar to a gladius. And of course that Spartan-esque um, helmet that would be a bronze helmet with a horse tail crest on it. Um, pretty cool miniature. The base is just a round block base, uh, so I would mount this on a gaming base. It does look like he's got open-toed sandals. Why not? Let's use this one. And boy, this one's pretty specific to that Grecian theme, so I may actually grab my Odysseys of Theros book and just look and see let's let's expand a little bit and use that I'll, I'm going to um, just jump up and grab that book from my case real quick I'll be right back and then we'll start building this character So I do have the book here, Mythic Odysseys of Theros, and we will use that as a supplement as we're building this character and see what we can creatively come up with. I am thinking about popping in another camera here just so we can keep that miniature kind of in the view. 
let's see what we can come up with here on the screen and see if we can't get a good image of it pulled up. And we'll move him right into frame. It's not the best, it's not the best, but that way we can keep an idea of what our inspiration is. Maybe we'll zoom that up a little bit. All right. So based on that figure, I can tell that um, it looks like a male figure. Um, or it does not have armor that uh, is augmenting uh, female anatomy anyhow. I suppose you could roll it either way and have a male or female. Um, here we go. We're going to roll up our stats and then well, I know we're supposed to pick our race and class first, so let's go ahead. Uh, for the race, I am just going to jump into the myth Mythic Odysseys, and we're going to look at character creation. And... And really, it does not have a whole ton of additions for your characters. Um, really, just going over the heroic drive. Uh, races are human, centaur, leonin, minotaur, satyr, and triton. And then it's got the College of Eloquence for bards and Oath of Glory for a paladin. So, um, <laughs> let's go ahead with that. Let's go ahead with that. All right, so I am going to say that this character is going to be a human. And now the next question is, do we make this a paladin or a fighter? I mean, definitely something fighting. I'm actually going to wait on the class moment. Um, let's see. Oh, starting off pretty decent. And I'm going to write the stats to the side just in case I need to look at adjustment or changing anything up like that. Ooh, that's not good. It's not horrible. Average. That's bad. Wow, look at that. Pretty smart. Pretty smart. So not, not too horrible, not too horrible. I've got a 15, 10, 8, 18, 14, and 10. Now, um, if we choose to do the uh, human race, uh, that pretty much follows along with your regular human race. So going into our player's handbook for the races, we will jump into humans and we can see that each of these is going to be a plus one We'll start in our late teens and live less than a century. I'm actually going to start them at 20 years old. 
uh, alignment we don't have to worry about, but because I want it to be that heroic aspect, I am going to go with, um, I am actually going to go with lawful good to start. Now we know we're medium, so we're going to be between uh, five and six feet. We will say that our height is five foot 11 inches and our speed is going to be walking 30 feet. Languages, we get to have common and one extra. And I am going to throw everything for a, a stretch here and say we are going to do, um, let's see here. What if we did something right from the book and we chose let's see here Sylvan That way we can speak with a satire, satire, satire. Uh, and I'm not going to do a variant at all. Now, according to our um, supplement, where we're going to be putting this character in, uh, we will have a supernatural gift. And so I'm going to treat this as we would a fate or a feat. Um, these are intended for starting characters. So we're going to roll a 1d6 and we get a 6. That means I'm destined to uncover the secret of the gods' power. So I'm going to put that up here in the features and traits. That will be the uh, heroic destiny of the gods powers all right And let's see here what we have in Theros for a name. Because I chose a human, I'm going to have this character be a male. Um, and so I am going to choose a male name. And I'm looking through here. Ristos, I like. Ristos. And generally they don't have surnames. Um, but we will add Ristos of... Um, let's see, what do they have for an example here? Melitus. All right, now let's go through, and what I wanted to look at was the Paladin Oath of Glory. So we've done a Paladin before, but I wanted to look at this. It caught my attention earlier uh, when I was reviewing this book. Um, Paladins who take the Oath of Glory believe they and their companions are destined to achieve glory through deeds of heroism. They train diligently, encourage their companions so they're all ready when destiny calls. So they have tenants of glory. 
And then at third level, they get Oath Spells. And Channel Divinity. <coughs> the path is actually pretty cool to go up to a living legend. Up to a living legend. I think I'm going to do that. So we're going to do a Paladin. Um, level 1. Let's pop in my name here. They don't have any experience yet. And... Basically, the Tenants of Glory, I'm going to write in here. And I'm just going to do the headers. Actions over words. We've got challenges are but tests. We've got hone the body. And we've got discipline of the soul. So if you want to hear any more about these aspects, um, it is available in the Odysseys of Theros. I'm not going to go through them all, uh, but for instance, uh, action over words, strive to be known by glorious deeds, not words. Uh, challenges are but tests. Face hardships with courage and encourage your allies to face them with you. So it's that type of um, glorious tenets. All righty. Now I want to go into the a little bit of the aspects of abilities and um, the saving throws and skills and all of that. So we know our strength is going to be a 16. We know our dexterity is going to be an 11. We're going to have a 9 constitution, 19 intelligence, a 14 wisdom, or I'm sorry, that'll be a 15 wisdom, a 14 plus 1. So a 15 wisdom and an 11 charisma. So my lowest one is actually constitution. Uh, so that's something that I'll want to improve on as I level up. Um, now, with that, as we go into our classes, we'll go back to the player's handbook. And with our paladin class, we will start there. To start building this fellow out. All right, so we're level one. We know that our proficiency bonus is plus two. And we will get at first level uh, Divine Sense and Lay on Hands. Uh, no spells yet. We know we'll have a 1d10 for our hit points. Uh, our current hit points are going to be 10 plus our constitution modifier, which is actually pretty weak. Let me go ahead and pop those modifiers in here with that 9. We've got a minus 1, so our current hit points are going to be 9. Not too good. Not too good at all. So we've got a plus 3... Uh, that's a plus zero. Uh, we've got a plus four. Plus four there. Uh, plus two. And a plus zero. Um, all right. Uh, so we are proficient with uh, all weapons. 
um, all armor, shields, and this is melee, uh, simple, and martial. Uh, saving throws, we will have wisdom and charisma. So our proficiency bonus will be added to that. And then for skills, we had to choose athletics, insight, intimidation, medicine, persuasion, and religion. Now, because this is that kind of Grecian themed aspect, I think two of the important ones for me are going to be um, athletics and religion. Two very important ones for that region, especially with a heroic destiny of the gods. Um, all right. Now we also get some starting equipment, martial weapon and shield, or two martial weapons. We're going to go with a short sword and shield. Now we get five javelins or any simple melee weapon. And so we don't have javelins on this figure, um, but I am going to say that they will have them. that they're keeping at camp, maybe. Uh, we get a priest pack or an explorer's pack. I'm going to pop down here, explorer's pack. And then we get chain mail and a holy symbol. Now, because we want our character to match the miniature, I'm going to be working with my uh, with my GM and saying, hey, instead of the chain mail, chain mail, can I get a breastplate? I mean, even though it's a lot more expensive, 400 gold versus your chain mail of 75, I think it makes good sense. Um, so I'm going to press my GM for it, and I'm hoping that they say, yeah, that makes more sense. So I'm going to change out the chain mail for a breastplate. And that breastplate is going to give me a 14 plus my dex modifier, which I've got a zero. So I'm taking a hit to my AC a little bit out the chute, but that's okay. And I think uh, my GM would be fine with that. Now for that Explorers pack, I'm gonna put the contents down here. So that's going to be a backpack uh, bedroll, mess kit. Uh, this is going to have a tinder box. Uh, this is going to have 10 torches. This is going to have 10 days rations. Uh, this is going to have a water skin. Oh. and 50 feet of hempen rope. So all my gear is laid out. I know what I have. I'm going to assume that a lot of this is going to be at camp in my tent ready to go. Even though I don't have a tent, I'll push the GM to say, hey, do we have a shared tent or something along those lines? And because I'm my GM, I'll allow it. Uh, all right, so let's go in and do the weapons here. So we've got a short sword, which is uh, I'm going to get a plus three to hit on that. Uh, actually, it'll be a plus five to hit on that with my proficiency. And then damage is 1d6 pierce. And then my javelins. Uh, that is going to be uh, also, plus 5, 1d6 pierce. All right, all right. 
Now let's go through. Now that we've got the crunchy stuff really done, now we can go through and really look at the miniature and talk about the character itself. Because ultimately, for me, myself, I really enjoy the aspects of the storytelling, the role playing at the table. While the tactics and crunchy number bits are certainly important during gameplay, for me, I really love to see characters develop over time amongst the fellow party members at the table and see how does the player really drive story elements and progress their character and what do they do with the character that they build. I want it to be more than just I can beat things up. So for me, the background aspects are super, super important and especially when you get into some of the uh, personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws. As a GM, I can use those to tell stories, to create the stories that my character uh, characters from the players will be encountering and experiencing so it ties back into their background and ultimately they become an aspect of the storytelling. So going back to the Odysseys of Theros, I'm going to look at the backgrounds. They've got Athlete as a background that you can choose. For this one here, now I've already chosen uh, athletics as my background but I like the thought of this person who has been training uh, kind of for their life and getting this call, this destiny call and becoming a paladin for it. So I'm going to stick with that um, right out of the book and choose to be an athlete. athlete. And because we know an athlete is going to have uh, athletics, I am going to go back to my paladin and look at other uh, skills that I can trade that athletics for. So I'm just going to jump back to Paladin and swap in something else so that we have a little bit more differentiation and not, uh, I guess, double dipping. So Paladin. Let's go with... Um, Let's go with Insight. Insight is a good one. All right, now back to our athlete background. Cool thing about this is you can bring it into other games and say they're from Theros or the region of your game world that they're from is that Grecian themed kind of background. Everything is going to flow because it's just an expansion into the basic rules. So we will get acrobatics as well as athletics, which is already marked as skill proficiencies. We do get an added language. So for this one here, I am going to add in, let's add in um, Havlin because they love to eat and party and see festivities and everything. Makes sense for me that Havelings would be an aspect of that. Um, at tool proficiencies, they will get land vehicles. So chariots and the such. Uh, they'll also get a bronze discus or leather ball. So let's go with, I'm going to put these in page two in um, in treasure. Bronze disc. Uh, a lucky charm or past trophy. I'm going to go with a past trophy. A set of traveler's clothes. And a pouch containing 10 gold pieces. All right, and then favorite event. So we get to roll to choose what event did we do. And this is a D8 roll. So number four, boxing. Which is kind of interesting because that low constitution means they have to be smart about how they're using their strength and trying to avoid being hit as much, but that is the f favored event. Um, all right, now we get a uh, 
let's see. Uh, we do get Echoes of Victory. Which just means we're welcomed in when we're in a certain range from our home. Uh, and then we get... our personality traits. Now these I am going to start rolling on, but if I don't like the outcome, I'm going to pick them myself. All right, we've got a seven. Anything worth doing is worth doing best. Anything worth doing is worth doing best. I think that flows pretty well. I'm going to read through these just to look at these. No, I think that works pretty good. Anything worth doing is worth doing best. Uh, ideals is a D6. A three, camaraderie. The strongest bonds are forged through struggle. Ooh, I like that. Uh, as a member of a party, that's a great aspect. The strongest bonds are forged through struggle. Uh, and then athlete bonds is also a d6, a four. I will be the best for the honor and glory of my home. Boy, that just fits right into those tenets of glory. I will be the best for the honor and glory of my home. And then a flaw. Five. Any defeat or failure on my part is because my opponent cheated. Hmm. I don't, I'm not feeling that one too much. I'm going to read through. Uh, I indulge in a habit that threatens my reputation or my health. I'll do absolutely anything to win. I ignore anyone who doesn't compete and anyone who loses to me. Any defeat or failure or, I'm sorry, I have lingering pain from old injuries. Any defeat or failure on my part is because my opponent cheated. I must be the captain of any group I join. I actually like, with that lower constitution, I like I have lingering pain from old injuries. So I have it in my game world where, um, let's say you take a massive amount of damage, right? And you, uh, you don't have an opportunity to take a health potion or have someone use a spell to heal you, but you heal through rest, um, long rest, things like that. I actually use that to be a little bit more uh, grimdark, you might say, but those types of wounds scar up so that after you've healed, even if you take a health potion, that scarring still remains. Uh, but just because that is uh, an aspect where it's marketed or marks you for the combat that you do. Uh, I envision, you know, you often see people with scars on their faces in games and things like that. And if magic heals everything and regrows limbs and everything, how would you keep that scar on? So that's how I roll it. If you uh, get a critical hit and you lose uh, fingers or a hand or something like that and you heal up naturally, you don't grow that hand back. So that's how you have, uh, you know, hook-handed pirates or, or just people, peg legs, things like that. They do exist because of that aspect. So I like that and that kind of gives me that justification for why that constitution is so low. It's a lingering wound. So that's pretty interesting. 
Now, a couple of these aspects have already got me started thinking about uh, this character. We don't have to worry about any spells yet. I wish that camera picked that up a little bit better. It doesn't really, so I'm actually going to move that out and we'll just pop this figure right there, right there, because as we work on this. So this is Aristos of Meletus. That should be an E there, not an I. Meletus. Um, we're going to say that we've got a good olive skin tone. Um, Weight-wise, we're going to be at about 175. We've got brown curly hair. And we've got hazel eyes. Now, our backstory, we're going to say Ristos of Meletus was raised by the um, was raised by the sporting uh, gosh, what's the word I'm looking for? Community. of Meletus. Ristos' parents. Um, I'm going to cheat again and go back in to those names so that I've got them quick and easy here. Let's go with uh, Hera of Meletus and let's go with Canlos of the Wolven Hills. So potential in Ristos. Ability to box and begin training him. Uh, from a young age. We'll say at 19, Ristos lost a brutal bout with, let me do it once more, a brutal bout with uh, Eocles. A traveler from a distant realm, land, from a distant land. Get some new lead here going. Um, suffering, uh, suffering from the pain. Uh, Ristos has decided to adventure to distant lands. To fulfill the destiny he envisioned while recovering. Ristus is hoping to discover the secret of the God's power.
And just like that, we have got a character who, from a young age, was being trained to be a boxer, entered into local games and county or country games, uh, like city-state games, and after getting this massive defeat from a person who uh, is from a distant land, he had these visions and this thought of his tenants of glory, his heroic destiny, that he is to uncover the secret of the God's power. So deciding to, after he healed, he still has some pain. He doesn't feel he's ready to get back to boxing yet. He is going to go adventuring to start looking for the secret of the God's power. He's going to follow his tenants of glory. He's going to hopefully fall in with a group that helps him with that camaraderie, building strong bonds over struggle. He is not going to be shying away from combat or anything like that. He is going to be continuing to uh, drive forward the party and uh, cheer them on for honor and glory and the honor and glory of his home. We put in the Wolven Hills for his father to tie in that little bit of the wolf. And um, it's something where possibly we could have a nickname for him be uh, something like the uh, powerful wolf who is strong, um, not super athletic or dexterous, uh, but currently in a wounded state, like in a trap. Uh, talking about his strength, his dexterity, and his constitution kind of all in one. Smart as a whip, he's got a 19 on intelligence, so extremely smart. And um, now as we look at the miniature, how would I paint this? So I would look at, I mean, he's definitely got the aspects of uh, that kind of tunic skirt. Uh, I would do white with blues. And it has a little bit of like banding decoration at the bottom. I would do those with gold. I would do a bronze non-metallic metal on the breastplate, the helmet, and the shield. Uh, also the greaves and the van brace. Uh, he does have a little bit of stuff here. He's, it looks like a cup and the, the sheath. Uh, belt in leather. The wolf hide in browns and grays. Uh, bright red for that uh, top, and then a deep red for that cape. I think that would really set off the whites, the blues, the yellows. Um, and then, of course, sandaled feet. I would do an olive skin tone for the little bits. You can see his hands, his feet, and you can see just a little bit into the mask. Not very much. I would keep that definitely shadowed. I would not attempt to paint eyes on this figure and then call out that um, wolf, maybe make it look like a battered dry brushing basically of, uh, of wear on that shield. Uh, the cape has a little bit of tear into it, so I would definitely kind of muddy up or dirty up that bottom where it rubs on the ground. Um, there are also a couple of nicks in the sword as well as the shield, so I would make sure to make those the brightest points where it's like freshly, um, freshly banged up bronze. Overall, there we go. Ristos of Meletus, a paladin uh, who is really looking for his heroic destiny. Uh, he does have tenants of glory and his overall background is as a youth who was raised athletically and uh, got injured, something that people can relate to pretty well and easily. It is now on a uh, path of discovery for his heroic destiny. So Ristos of Meletus. This miniature is going to go to the back of the line for miniatures that I have to paint. Uh, the character sheet is going to be kind of prepped up, popped in with the other character sheets, that we have built over the show. And at some point, of course, don't hesitate, give a comment if you think um, it would be interesting to do a giveaway of the miniature with a character sheet, or if you think we should possibly pop these up for uh, sale. 
or if we should use these for some type of a charity event. Be sure to leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If you enjoy this program, this show, this type of aspect and building characters, looking for how we can utilize characters in a different, exciting way, and ultimately uh, looking at character creation from a completely different lens from what most people do. We're a little bit ahead of schedule. This character wasn't super complicated, so it didn't take a whole lot of time. But we did stretch out into the Mythic Odysseys of Theros as a supplement. It was pretty interesting. I look forward to diving a little bit more into some of the supplements going forward, as well as just continuing with some of the basics. We've still yet to build a basic monk. So if we get to draw a uh, miniature that inspires us for a monk class, that'll be very fun to do. Otherwise, we may start branching out a little bit more into the supplemental materials. Let me know your thoughts, and until next week, have a fantastic week. Let us know where will your adventures take you. Bye-bye.